Oh. Rima, I thought we were going to be like BFFs in the house. That's what we said from the beginning. And then you turned on me. Why'd you turn fake on me, Rima? I don't understand. It's your girl Vanny 2.0 and I am back here with another video for you guys. Shout out to all my real ones. If you are a real one, then that means you are subscribed to this beautiful, lovely channel. And if you aren't, then clearly you have yet to hit that red subscribe button and hit that bell so you can get notified about all your girl upcoming videos. Period. So you know I don't like long intros. Y'all already know what this is about from the title. This is part two of the Stripper Chronicles, meaning if you haven't seen part one yet, you need to pause this video because you're not gonna have any clue what I'm talking about. The link to part one will be in the description box below. So yeah, pause this video and go watch part one first if you haven't watched part one. And if you have seen part one and you just like, girl, I'm waiting on part two. Well, this is the video for you. So y'all ready to get into this? Let's do this. So if y'all can't tell, I'm in the RV right now and I got the air on and I hope it's not too loud, but just in case it is, I'm finna cut it down a little bit. All right, y'all. And there's some other background noise going on right now, y'all. That is out of my control. So if y'all hear a lawnmower going by in the background, y'all, I what y'all want me to go do? Beat the man up and tell him to get off the lawnmower. Bruh. I can't do nothing about it, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, y'all. So let's pick up where I left off. So the end of part one was basically me telling y'all that it's me, Ace, and Ace's brother, and we're all in the car, and we enter into this apartment complex, and I'm thinking this must be where Ace's brother lives, or he must got to pick something up or something, right? But the trunk goes open, Ace gets out the car, he tells me to come on, and he got my suitcase. So apparently, yeah, this is home, this is where I'm finna be staying at. So we go into the apartment, y'all, and I'm not even gonna flex. It's it's nice, especially for it to be two guys living there, because y'all know guys be kind of messy. But it was actually very clean. It was very nice for two men to be staying there. And it was a two-bed, one-bath. So I'm looking around, and I'm like, okay, Ace got a room. Ace brother got a room. Where my room at? So Ace rolls my suitcase into his room, y'all, right? And he's like, oh, well, you know, I work overnight. Ace worked from 10 p.m. to 10 a.m. So he was like, basically, the hours that you're probably going to be asleep, I'm not even going to be here anyway. I'm going to be at work. So you can just have my room, basically, is what he told me. And I'm like, yeah, you're going to have to... You're going to have to let a girl know something because I'm not sleeping in no bed with you, baby. I will be like, future, before I sleep in the bed with you. And my mama said, N hit the streets and live. Got some in the corner and I did what I did. The neighbors, they don't like me. I got J's at the door. Told Ace, I don't need a bed. I'm sleeping on the floor. Baby, who finna sleep in the bed with you? Not me. Oh, baby, no, nah, that ain't going to work. But I ain't going to lie, y'all. He ain't never really tried me or bothered me. Like I said, our, our uh, schedules always conflicted. So we were kind of never really at the same place at the same time anyway. So A starts telling me about this girl. We're going to name her Aqua. Now, Aqua lives in the apartment complex that we stay in as well. And she danced at a few different clubs or whatever. And he was telling me that he wanted me to meet her. You get what I'm saying? Because we're around the same age. She could probably teach me some tricks. You know, little stuff like that. So Ace goes to work that night. And I remember the next day we actually run into Aqua. Now she was in the middle of getting ready to go somewhere. But you know, we introduced ourselves to each other. And Aqua was telling me about some of the stores in Miami that I could get some dental floss outfits from. Y'all, that's what I call the stripper outfits. Because you know, it's more skin showing than anything, baby. Them outfits be all of this much material two hundred dollars period Bruh. like <laughs> so i want to say it was about like two three days later me and ace start going to some of the stores that aqua told us about because of course i'm trying to dance i'm down here zero dollars zero cents i ain't got nothing no money no nothing so yeah we start going to these stores so i can try to find me some fits so I gave me a couple outfits, y'all. I want to say I got like four or six, somewhere around there, you know, just so I have a little nice amount to start with and like two pairs of heels. 
So we leave the store or whatever. We get our stuff. That's that. And I'm ecstatic because, mind you, I'm like, okay, within the next day or two, a girl finna be going into these clubs. She finna start working, like, period. She finna start doing it like it's her be day. So the next day comes, y'all, and we run into Aqua again. And at this time, Aqua was actually getting ready to go to work. Now, Aqua will work the day shift, the night shift. Aqua didn't care about it because Aqua was getting that bread. So Aqua was getting ready to go to work, and she was like, hey, you should come up to the uh, club that I work at and see if they'll hire you here. And the club that she was at at the time, well, that she mainly danced at, was called Playhouse. We just pulled up to Playhouse, and as you can see, it is swole. Yikes. So Ace takes me to Playhouse that day, y'all. And I remember when I got in there, since y'all be wanting little stripper tips and things of that nature, I remember when I got there, number one, I asked one of the bartenders for a manager because number one, never ask a stripper, never ask a bartender, is the strip club hiring because y'all already know how females are. Jealousy, envious, hating. They feel like, oh no, we don't want her in here because she gonna try to take the bread. They don't want a new stripper. They don't want another bartender because... That's how they looking at it. You taking money out of my pocket. And so I met the manager, y'all. He was like a bald head white man. I ain't gonna lie. He was, he was kind of nice looking. He looked probably like early 40s or whatever. Very friendly, very nice or whatever. So, you know, we having a little conversation. And I'm like, hey, you know, you guys hiring or whatever. And he was like, yeah, hold on. Just stay right here. One second. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go grab an application. And in my mind, I'm like, you finna go grab an application? Like, you gotta apply to be a stripper like i didn't know that was a thing like you feel me like you apply to be a stripper the same way you apply for a walmart or a call center job or the state or hey a mcdonald's it's an application like oh okay okay so once i'm done filling out the application y'all we go like to the back where his office is and he scans my id and the whole reason of me telling y'all that he scans my id is because like i said i don't know how it is now but this was when i was 18 i'm 26 now so this story time was from almost 10 years ago they would scan your IDs because what well, they wanted to make sure that they was real back then it was a lot of chanelica bending courts and they would raid strip clubs because they knew it was a lot of girls in them strip clubs that was 15, 16, 17, and they weren't supposed to be there. So, yeah, they got to make sure you legal, baby, that you really 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So, once I'm done doing the application and he done scanned my ID and everything, the manager of the strip club basically asked me would I like to come back the next day so that I could dance at the club, you know, and get a feel of it to see if this is a club that I would like to dance at, that I would like to be at. So, I'm like, of course, like, yeah. Yeah. Which leads to another tip, y'all. Just because a strip club does not hire you does not mean that they think that you are ugly, necessarily. Now, it could absolutely mean that, and I'm not going to hold y'all, because everybody want to be a stripper, but let's be real. You might not have the face or the body to be a stripper, and I'm not saying that to be me. I'm just a realist. So, okay, but you might not have it. Number two, the reason I say that is because I'm dark-skinned, Okay. If I go to a club where there are predominantly lighter women in there stripping, they're not going to hire me. Not because they think I'm an ugly, dark-skinned woman, but because that's what they sell in there. They're selling a lighter shade and vice versa. If you're a lighter woman, you could try to go to a club where there's mainly dark women in there. You might not get hired, not because they think you ugly, but you're not what we're selling. And it just be like that sometimes. It don't even have to be a color thing. It could be your shape. You could be too skinny. They probably want super thick women. You could be too thick. We probably want them a little slim thick. It's what they want to sell. So don't always think, oh, I didn't get hired. So let me have a mental breakdown. I'm not thick enough. I'm not skinny enough. I'm not pretty enough. I'm not light enough. I'm not dark enough. I'm not. Them people, them people going to want what they want. And you a bad bitch, period, at the end of the day. So y'all, I'm ecstatic. Because I'm like, dang, like the next day I'm really finna be dancing. I'm finna be on this pole. I'm really finna be in the strip club. And at this time, y'all, people like uh, Aaliyah and Spider were big. People like Paul Assassin were big. People like Mazzani were big. And if you don't know any of them four ladies that I just named, type their name in the search bar on YouTube. Baby, they is like legends of the pole, like period. So I was out at this time that these women were big. Like some of y'all probably have heard of the pole thon Like that, that was a thing back then. Like, so I was like, yeah, it's something up. 
Finna, ooh, ooh. So y'all, I'm coming to a dilemma almost immediately because I'm like, okay, yeah, you got your little outfits, you got your little shoes, you got your little club to dance at, but you ain't got no stripper name. Bruh. Girl, what these people finna be calling you tomorrow? So I'm trying to think of a name, Ace trying to think of a name. Y'all, we cannot come up with nothing everything we thinking of y'all is like the most generic most terrible most uninteresting stripper names in the world y'all so y'all it just got to the point where i was like if it my stripper name gonna be my nickname manny but same breath same sentence i was like it's nothing wrong with having my stripper name my nickname y'all see missy if y'all see that little fur come that's her y'all know she don't care y'all know missy don't care but i'm like if i just use my nickname it's not giving what it's supposed to give in the strip world you get what i'm saying so i'm like i need to add something to manny if that's what i'm finna use because it need to give what it's supposed to give so y'all i done got mad i don't even care no more i'm like whatever i think of something later and i ended up getting on facebook so i get on facebook or whatever and i kid y'all not i just see the word blaze and I don't know why, when I saw that word, I was just like, Manny Blaze. And the shit just stuck with me, y'all. Like, I love the way that it rolled off the tongue. I love the way that it sound. Manny Blaze. I was like, that's the one. That's what we finna call you, girl. Manny Blaze. So the next day comes, y'all. It's my first day, right, in the strip world. So I ended up riding the playhouse with Aqua because, of course, she already had to go to work too, right? So, of course, I'm nervous because I just turned 18. I don't know nothing about stripping, okay? I don't know nothing about that life. Like, I don't know what it's like working in the strip club. You know, the stripper environment, the different stripper, stripper beef, stripper drama. But I'm not even going to hold y'all. Like, I remember at Playhouse, it wasn't like no stripper fights. Well, not that I saw. Like, everybody pretty much got along. And I feel like if bitches didn't like each other in the club... We was there getting our money and going home, like, period. It wasn't all of that. You get what I'm saying? But I was still just nervous. Y'all get what I'm saying? I'm, I'm a baby, and I'm really finna do this. So I'm like, oh, my God. Now, I can't leave this out. I got to tell y'all this story right here, y'all. So the first time that they called my name to the stage, I get up there, right, y'all? And I'm dancing, you feel me? I'm twerking, all that right there, whatever. Walking around the pole, little dance, little movements and stuff or whatever, right? Now, that's what I should have stuck to doing. Twerking, little movements, little walks around the pole. Because I already don't know what I'm doing. I just should have stuck to that. Little, 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 little ass clout. That's what I should have stuck to, right? Y'all, why something in my head told me to try to climb these people pole? No, you're not fucked up, don't you? Uh, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not fucked up. Mind you, y'all, yes, yeah, some people take pole dancing classes, you feel me? For recreation, just for fun, okay? I'm 17 going on 18. Baby, what pole, what, what, what pole class? Some people have poles in their houses, you know, in their rooms or in their living room just for fun. I just turned 18. What pole in my living room for fun? Baby, I ain't never climbed no pole before. I ain't really climbed nothing since goddamn elementary school when you was climbing ropes and shit. So I'm like, what in my brain told me to jump on this pole? Y'all, it only gets worse. As soon as I jump on the pole, and by the way, y'all, if you ever dance to take pole uh, dancing classes, then you know. It's a certain way that you put your foot on a pole and stuff. You get what I'm saying? It's a certain placement. So, I, of course, I don't know none of this. I just grab the pole, y'all. Like, I literally just jump on it. When I jump on it, y'all, please tell me why that bitch went to swinging on my ass. Bruh. Now, in my mind, I'm like... Is this a hole in the wall club or something? Is these people pole broke? Like, why is this shit spinning? Now, at that time, y'all, like I said, I don't know nothing about strip life, poles, none of this. Just turned 18. I didn't know that there were spinning poles. Like, that was a thing. So, y'all, I'm literally on the pole just trying to hold on for dear life. I'm talking about it's just spinning my ass. It's spinning me. So, I'm just trying to hold on. I'm just trying to hold on, y'all. Please tell me why as the spinning is slowing down, 
once it kind of like gets to a stopping point y'all tell me why i fell off that pole and it wasn't even like a fall like it threw me i kind of like it's like my body just gave out because i remember feeling nervous even up there like you know what i'm saying you be kind of scared so i feel like my body just kind of and i just slid down that bitch i just dropped I just drop straight off that motherfucker, y'all. And it's so crazy because now that I think about it, I'm like, did any of them really realize that I fell? Mind you, it was daytime, so it wasn't like a whole bunch of customers in there. I'm like, did anybody in this bitch just realize I just fell off this pole? Like, but I kid you not, y'all, after that, after I got off stage, two different guys ended up paying for like private room dances with me. So I was like, dang, that's a blessing. Like, <laughs> I just bust my behind. But I'm getting this bag, though. <laughs> Not because I'm 18, Aqua 21, you feel me? She's a stripper, I'm a stripper. I'm from Tallahassee, Florida. She from Memphis, Tennessee. Shout out to Memphis, though. You feel me? Memphis is country. So we basically pretty much getting along well because, well, we got things in common. Aqua didn't have her mama, daddy, sister, brother, or cousin either. She came to Miami by herself. So other than Aqua's boyfriend, she didn't really have nobody. So yeah, now she got a female and now I got a female that I can, you know, do girl stuff with. We can get our nails done together. We already work together. You feel me? We get off work. We going out to eat. We going to the beach. We going to the movies. We, we doing whatever because we got somebody to hang with now. Like it got to the point y'all where I was like barely even home because I would always either be like at Aqua House with her and her boyfriend or we'll just be gone. Like we'll be doing something. We'll be at the movies, the beach, out to eat. Like I said, we'll be doing something. So I would never even really be at Ace apartment. Now I guess this made Ace feel some type of way because I'm always with Aqua. I'm never really hanging with him basically. And I think, like I said, that made him well feel some type of way. But in my mind, I'm just like, you the one introduced me to this girl. You know we around the same age, working at the same strip club. Basically, what I'm trying to say to y'all is, what did you expect? What did you expect? Either one or two things could have happened in this situation. Either we was going to get along or we wasn't. And we got along. You the one introduced me to the girl. What did you expect? And I'm not even going to hold y'all. I didn't even really like being around Ace like that. Our personalities just didn't match. He, match. he was giving me simp. He was giving me lame. He was giving me square. He was giving... Just keep watching the video and y'all going to see why I say he was giving me all of that. And it was so funny to me because Ace and his brother were completely different. Ace was aggravating. You could tell he simp. He was a simp. Like, he wanted to be that eager, but he not that eager. Like, it's just, it's not for you, baby. It's not for you. That's something that got to be in you. It's not in you. And the brother would always be at work. And if he wasn't at work, the brother would be in his room chilling, like minding his own business. He didn't even really bother me. The boy would barely even say, hey, this shit I'm about to tell y'all, y'all finna be like, what the hell? Y'all, I will never forget. One day, it was me, Aqua, and Aqua boyfriend all chilling at their apartment, right? Now, Aqua boyfriend, he on the computer and... He got the TV, you know how people have the TVs mounted on the wall. So the TV up there playing and he got the music blasting, y'all. So me and Aqua just sitting on the couch talking and in our phones and stuff like that, right? So we think we hear a knock at the door, but we're not sure. So Aqua's boyfriend turned the music down or whatever, you know, trying to see if we're going to hear a knock again. So we hear a knock again. So now Aqua boyfriend looking at Aqua like, you expecting somebody? And Aqua looking at her boyfriend like, are you expecting somebody? And I'm looking at them like, well, who at y'all though? Because y'all looking like y'all don't know who it is. Who is it? So y'all know I can't say certain words or whatever on YouTube or whatever, right? So, um, yeah. Aqua boyfriend gets up from his computer desk or whatever and he grabs his protection. And he goes to the door and he like, who this? Y'all, why the person on the other side of the door say it's Ace? Bruh. So at this point, we all kind of like looking at each other like, why is Ace at the door? So Aqua's boyfriend opens the door and 
Ace is like, hey, is Manny in there? And Aqua's boyfriend was like, yeah. And he closes the door back. So he comes and tells me, you feel me? Ace set the door for me. Mind you, y'all, I checked my phone because I'm dead ass. Like, why did he just pop up to these people's house? So I grab my phone and I'm looking. I'm like, I don't have not one missed call from him. Not one mixed text from him. Why are you at these people's door? You didn't call me. You ain't text me. You ain't do none of that. But you just felt the need to come knock on their door to see if I was here. But you ain't try to reach out to me before that. That's suspicious. That's weird. So I get up, y'all, and I go outside, well, excuse me, like, to the doorway to go talk to Ace, right? Y'all, Ace just standing there looking pissed off. Like, some people just wear their emotions on their face. I know because I am one of them people. Like, he just looked pissed off. So Ace was like, so how long you going to be here? And I'm like, I don't know because, mind you, y'all, it was probably like 8, 9 o'clock. I'm like, why aren't you getting ready to go to work? Like, why are you worried about me being still over here? Like, what you mean? When am I coming back? Do you need something? Can I help you? Like, let me show y'all what Ace does next. All right. Well, when you get to the house, I'm going to need the money for them outfits and them shoes that I bought you. So I'm like... Let's be very, 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 very clear. Every single time Ace and his brother would go grocery shopping, I would give grocery money. Let's be very clear. Every time I had a good day, I would give Ace money. Because mind you, they wasn't asking me to help with rents or lights or anything like that, but I would still give money just because. So I'm giving grocery money. I'm giving just because money. So please don't come at me like it's an issue for you to get your money back for them outfits. Because, mind you, at the time that he said that, y'all, I had already been in Miami for three months. Bruh. Three months. Three months. Let's be real. If the issue was about you wanting your money back for them outfits, you would have asked for your money back for them outfits a month ago. Hell, you would have said that when you first bought them. I want my money back. The only reason you showing up to these people door right now talking about some, you want your money back from some outfits that you bought three months ago is because you're salty and you're jealous. You're mad because I'm not hanging with you. So like I told y'all, Ace worked overnight. So by the time that I had left from Aqua and Aqua boyfriend apartment, Ace was already gone to work. The next day, by the time he got off work and got home, I would already be gone to work myself. So we hadn't seen each other since he said what he said about he want his money back for them outfits, right? So I go to work, me and Aqua, whatever, we go out to eat as we always did when we got off from work and we come back to the apartment complex. And guess what I do? Give Ace his money. Because you want your money back for them outfits, right? I'm finna give it to you. Understand it's no pressure because you did spend your money on it. You want it back? I ain't finna argue with you. You did spend your money on them outfits. Thank you. I appreciate that. Here you go, love. Here go your money. Now, to furthermore tell you why I know it was never no pressure about the money on them outfits. Y'all, Ace looked at me when I gave him the money for them outfits as if I just spat on him. He looked at me with so much disgust. He looked at me like I had literally just had a bowel movement and threw it in his face. So, shit's still going the way that it's going. I'm still hanging with Aqua all the time. And Ace still acting like he angry. Because once again, I told y'all, it was never about you wanting the money back for them little dental floss fits in them heels. It was never about that. That's why you still mad after you got the money back. So, of course, y'all, I done been in Miami for a little while. Aqua done taught me some pole tricks. Different dancers are teaching me pole tricks. They teaching, uh, teaching me little things that you can do, you know. So, basically, what I'm saying is the skill level is going up. 
I'm learning more. I'm learning how to dance better. I'm more comfortable in the environment. So I'm talking to the, uh, the, the men that's coming in better. You get what I'm saying? The money is going up and a start paying attention to that. So one night I come from Aqua House. It's probably like 8.39 or whatever. And mind you, like I said, Ace went to work at 10 o'clock. So he's getting ready to go to work. And I just remember, we all can feel when energy is off. So energy is off. He's still petty, attitudinal, uh, just acting how he acting. So I remember right before he gets ready to walk out the door, he says to me, oh yeah, just letting you know, starting tomorrow, I'm going to need half of whatever you make every day. Wait a damn minute. <laughs> what? Yes, y'all did just hear me correctly. Meaning if a bitch ain't made nothing but $20, he feel like he should get 10 of them. If I make $500, he feel like he should get 250 If I make a band, he feel like he should get 500 but for what? You must drunk some bleach before you let that come out your mouth. It's the only way that I can think possible that you even felt confident enough to say that. So I'm like, oh, well, baby, that's not going to work. I'm not giving you half of my money every day. That's just on period, bitch. That's on your bald head, no neck, mammy. Like, it's not happening. So he was like, well, it got to work. I say, no, it don't have to work because I'm telling you it's not going to. Okay, baby? My ex going to say... Oh, we going to see. Yeah, you absolutely right. We are going to see. Like, the delusion. Like, how are you going to say, oh, yeah, we going to see about me giving you half of my money. It's my money. It's mine. So, yeah, you you right. We are going to see. We going to see it in my purse. So, that night, you feel me? Ace goes to work or whatever. And he gets off. I hear the front door open. So, I kind of, like, sit up in the bed. And Ace finally comes in his room. He opens the door and he put his stuff down or whatever. Still looking petty. Still looking mad. Still looking like he got an attitude or whatever. But he walked back out the room. So I assume like, oh, he must have went to the restroom or something like that. You feel me? Now, mind y'all, this day, Ace had got home from work like 12, 1 o'clock. And the reason for that was because Ace had a... Uh, Friends with benefits, cut buddy, sneaky link, whatever you would like to call sis. We gonna name her Laisha. And I guess he had picked up Laisha and took her to go buy some dental floss fits, y'all. The stripper fits and some heels so she could start working at Playhouse too. Well, Playhouse didn't hire her. So I don't know if that pissed him off like he was mad because they had just left from Playhouse and they hired me and he know that they hired Aqua and they wouldn't hire his uh friends with benefits sneaky link Laisha. i don't know if he was mad because they didn't hire her i don't know if he was already mad still at me i don't know what it was but baby energy was definitely just off so and the reason i said that is because when he went to the restroom and i had ended up getting up out the bed Laisha ended up telling me that playhouse didn't hire her or whatever so i'm like well maybe he got an attitude because of that y'all so ace comes out the bathroom right and come back into the room Y'all, why Ace say when he come in the room, so you got the money? Y'all, I just sit there looking like I'm I'm dumb. Because you clearly can't be talking to me. Like, I literally just sit there like I did not hear him. Because you clearly can't be talking to me. Like, you must be talking to Laisha. You must be talking to your brother, like... Casper the ghost must be in here. You must be talking to God or somebody right now because you're not talking to me. Y'all, why Ace then says it again? You got the money? Cut the cameras. Dead ass. At this point, y'all, I just get up out the bed, go in the bathroom, take my little morning pee, brush my teeth, wash my face type thing. Like, I'm not even studying him. Y'all, the whole time I'm in the bathroom getting myself together, please tell me why Ace standing at the door like he trying to intimidate me type shit. Like, he's standing at the door just saying little things to me or whatever. And I'm just like, boy. So when I come out the bathroom, y'all, 
Ace is still standing right there. And I walk right past him. And I go in the room. And I just start packing up my stuff. Because at this point, baby, I'm finna go. I don't know where I'm finna go. But I'm not finna stay here. Because you're not even finna play with me. And if y'all have been watching my videos, y'all already know I'm not even rap tight. So I'm like, this not the situation for me to be in. Because, yeah. Let me pack up my stuff and get up out of here. So, y'all, when I'm done packing or whatever, I get up. And I leave, you feel me? I go out the front door. And I remember when the front door was open, it was like a whole thing. Like, it was a whole thing. Like, I remember Ace was like, was that her? Was that her that just touched the door? She just left? Was that her? And I remember, y'all. <laughs> I remember when I had closed the door, I started walking up the steps. Because at that point, I was walking upstairs to Aqua's apartment to see if she was home because at that point in my mind i'm trying to see if aqua is home so she can get me uh a ride to a hotel because well who the hell want to live or sleep out of a hotel for days and days and days nobody but i'm definitely not finna stay here so as i'm walking up the steps y'all to go to aqua's house please tell me why ace opened the door because i told you it was a whole thing like did she open the door was that her did she just leave he not standing there watching me walk up the steps to aqua house so i knock on the door i'm knocking on the door i'm knocking on the door y'all aqua's boyfriend answers the door so i'm like hey is aqua here and he was like no she just left to go pick up some food so she'll be right back you know drive through it don't take that long she'll be back in probably like 10 15 minutes now y'all aqua boyfriend must have saw like the uh the distraughtness on my face he must have seen that like i looked like something was up because he was like what's wrong with you like and i want to say he peeped and looked and he saw a standing there watching me so he was kind of like he was peeping he didn't know what was going on of course but aqua boyfriend peeping like something not right so he was like come in here like just stay in here till aqua get here or whatever so i stay in aqua and aqua boyfriend apartment and they living room or whatever just chilling till aqua got back so aqua comes back y'all and i'm telling her basically what happened how i packed my stuff this man talking about he won't have for my money every day and all this other mess right so aqua like he won't have for your money every day that sound like a pimp to me. Duh, that sound like a pimp to all of us. You feel me? So as I'm telling Aqua the whole thing about A saying that he won't have for my money every day, right? See, I be peeping. I be watching shit, right? I remember Aqua boyfriend kind of making this face kind of like when I said that. Y'all, please tell me why Aqua boyfriend goes on to say, Manny. I'm going to just keep it real with you. We already knew you was coming down here before you came. Aqua boyfriend was like, yeah. Ace kept telling me he had a girl coming down here that was going to be staying with him. And then Aqua was like, yeah, he wouldn't stop talking about you. He kept showing me pictures of you. Aqua boyfriend was like, you know, when he'll be walking through the hallway, going back up to his apartment, if Ace would see him by himself, He'll be asking him like pimp questions and trick questions. You feel me? And the whole time, Aqua boyfriend like, why is he asking me questions like this? Because, well, I'm not a pimp. And I don't have no tricks. You feel me? I don't have no bottom bitch. Like, why is he asking me these questions? Like, but of course he started putting two and two together. Ace thought Aqua's boyfriend was Aqua's pimp. Bruh. so that's why he asking him all these pimp questions and basically he started putting it together in his head that ace was asking him these questions because he was gonna try to pimp me when i came down here to the 305 so it was all a setup it was all a lie guys it was all a lie she lied so Aqua boyfriend was like, I already knew this day was coming, Manny. Honestly, I already knew it was coming because I knew the shit wasn't going to go down. Number one, he's a simp. He cannot pimp no nobody. If y'all seen Ace, y'all would be like, 
girl i could rob him like seriously that that is not for ace i see ace tricks robbing him i see them beating him up like you feel me so it's not for you it's really it's just not that type of life is not for ace at all so aqua boyfriend like i already knew this day was coming so at this point me and aqua just chilling in the living room or whatever talking watching tv this day and the third and aqua boyfriend tell us that he about to get ready to slide so aqua boyfriend leaves or whatever and i promise y'all not even like two minutes passes by and we hear a key in the door so we like dang he back already y'all aqua boyfriend come in there looking pissed he look mad he looking like don't even play with me so i'm like what just happened that fast like you literally just walked out of here and now you walk back in here looking like you ready to do something like what is going on y'all so out of nowhere aqua boyfriend looks at me and i'm like he like, yo. And I'm like, oh shit, what the fuck just happened? So after he say, yo, I'm like, yo. He like, you came down here with a black suitcase. And I'm like, why is he yelling at me about a black suitcase? Yeah, I did come down here with a black suitcase. But why he hollering about a black suitcase? Like, oh Lord, what the hell going on? So I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah, I did come down here with a black suitcase. So, y'all, Aqua Boyfriend was like, get up. And I'm like, oh, shit, okay, I'm finna get up. Tell me why Aqua's boyfriend basically tells me when he was going down the steps to go wherever he was finna get ready to go, he seen A standing outside by his door with a black suitcase. And so, of course, something in his brain was like, this gotta belong to her because why you just standing out the door and you got a suitcase out the door? Nigga, you ain't finna slide no way. You ain't going out of time. Your ass is broke. So... He started putting it in his head like, this got to be this girl's stuff. So, Aqua Boyfriend got pissed because he was like, basically, if she not going to live there no more or you going to put her out, uh, however it's going to go, that's fine. But you don't throw somebody's stuff out your house like that. Like, don't put that girl's suitcase out the house like that. So, Aqua's boyfriend was pissed. He was like, you're going to go get your suitcase right now. Y'all, as I'm walking down the steps to get my suitcase right, aqua's boyfriend is standing like at the halfway point so basically he's standing like right here so ace's house is like right here you know that step that takes you down to ace's house right here and if you go on the steps to take you up that next floor is aqua and ace's house so he's standing like right there at that midpoint just watching me he was like go get your suitcase and that nigga not gonna touch you that nigga ain't gonna say shit to you go get your shit i'm standing right here and guess what? I got my shit. And Ace ain't touch me. And Ace ain't say nothing. <laughs> Y'all should have been there to see Ace's face. He looked so disgusted. He looked so upset. Like, he looked so frustrated that his plans of kicking me out and having me homeless in the 305 street stranded and not knowing what to do did not work. That's a walking demon, ladies and gentlemen. Anybody that's hoping... They hope that something bad happened to you. That's a demon. So, I go upstairs with my suitcase or whatever, back upstairs to Aqua and Aqua's boyfriend's apartment or whatever, right? And um, at this point, I'm just trying to see if Aqua can take me to a hotel or whatever because I'm like, shit, I just stay at a hotel. But Aqua's boyfriend was like, no, you ain't got to get no hotel room or whatever. You can just stay here because how you going to stack bread if you paying for a hotel room every day? You going to be spending most of your bread on the room. Like, you're not really going to be able to stack. So, just stay here. Now, I'm finally going to give Aqua's boyfriend a name because he becomes a big part of part three, okay? So, we're no longer calling Aqua's boyfriend Aqua's boyfriend. We're going to give him a name now. We're going to call Aqua's boyfriend Lucky. Now, at Lucky's apartment, there's Aqua there's lucky and there's lucky's mother now lucky was not living with his mom because i know some of y'all gonna be like oh he a bro he living with his mama that no. his mother is full blood haitian like she speaks no english straight creole and she's sick um i think she was like on dialysis or something so he literally like took his mom to uh her appointments and just paid the bills and had her living there with him so like I said, it was Lucky, Lucky's mom, and Aqua. Well, if you want to include me now, because I'm there. Now, 
there was this stripper. We're going to name her Diamond. Now, y'all going to be like, Manny, where do Diamond come from? Why is you telling us about Diamond? Just wait. Now, Diamond worked at Playhouse with us as well. She was a cool girl, you feel me? I remember she had a lot of hair, y'all. Like, when I tell y'all she had a big afro and it was her real hair, big afro, pretty long hair, like pretty girl naturally, but troublesome. Um, She had a pimp. Uh, I think she was his bottom bitch or whatever. And long story short, you know, he used to beat her up and stuff. And she started doing drugs or whatever. And, um... I remember one day Aqua telling me that she was on the way back to the crib and she thought she saw Diamond walking past the laundromat. So, you know, she pulls over and it was Diamond. So, Aqua sees once she get up close on Diamond that Diamond got a black eye. Like, she got bruises on her. She done been beat up. So, Diamond basically tells Aqua that her pimp beat her up. He threw her out. And that's why she basically up here at the laundromat because... She was only able to grab, like, some of her clothes and stuff in laundry baskets. So, Aqua helps Diamond get all her stuff in her car. And they take Diamond back to Aqua and Lucky's apartment. Now, at the time that this situation happened, I was still staying with Ace. So, I remember seeing Aqua and Diamond go places together. And sometimes, I would go places together with them. It would be all of us, Diamond, Aqua, and me. But I remember that shit stopped expeditiously. And when I say expeditiously, y'all, that shit probably went on for like two, maybe three weeks. And Diamond just stopped coming around. Like, when I say y'all Diamond stopped coming around, she just disappeared. All of her stuff, all of her belongings was still at Aqua's house in Aqua and Lucky's apartment. But she just never came back. Like, she was not there. We didn't see diamond at work like it was just hard to get in contact with this girl it's damn near like she disappeared and mind y'all at this time molly was popping molly molly was popping it was in them days of matter of fact that song was out when i was in the strip club you ain't even know it put molly all in her champagne she ain't even know it yeah this was in them days where people was doing that like people was doing in the 80s it's still functioning okay so yeah like i say my girl diamond was just i don't know she was going through it like i said she had a pimp that was beating her up she was on drugs baby she used to like to pop pills and things was just going on we was trying to figure out what's going on with baby girl why you didn't come back to a place that basically could have helped you right? long story short i told y'all it got to the point where we didn't really even see diamond no more at all so i guess one day diamond texts aqua's phone and asks was she home and aqua was like yeah so diamond takes back and was like oh well, i'm finna come get my stuff or whatever from your house now mind you this after three weeks of you dropping the stuff off and just basically disappearing we barely even see you anymore so y'all it just so happens that when diamond comes to get her stuff I'm over there at Aqua and Lucky's apartment. Because I told y'all I used to be over there all the time. Please tell me why when Diamond come in, she come in with another girl. The other girl work at the strip club that we work at too, Playhouse as well. Now this girl known. This girl is known for being on drugs. This girl known for it. Like, when I say known, known for being on drugs. They be in the room just, in the back room just gone. So we like, oh, so this where Diamond been at. She been with the druggy stripper. They just been high off drugs together. Mind you, when both of them came in to get Diamond stuff, they both look high as hell. And no, y'all know I ain't talking about off that good green stuff. They both look like they zooted, like they gone. They look dusty too, like they ain't bathed in a minute. So we like, oh, this where Diamond been at. This why Diamond ain't been wanting to be around us because we are well, we ain't off them jiggles, baby. We not doing all of that. So she gets her stuff or whatever, and she leaves with the uh other stripper or whatever, right? So I remember one day I seen Diamond at work. Cause mind you, like I said, at this point in time, Diamond was barely even coming to work. And I asked her, I say, you know, why did you never come back to uh Aqua House when Aqua was trying to help you? You got a pimp that's beating you up and throwing you out and doing this, that, and the third to you. Well, clearly I knew she didn't want to be at Aqua House, you feel me? Because she wanted to do drugs and shit like that. But I'm like, but why would you leave a safe place? Why would you leave somebody trying to help you to go hang with another druggy stripper? Like, it just, the math is not mathing. So Diamond proceeds to tell me, 
I mean, I appreciate Aqua and all because I know that she's coming from a good place. I know she don't mean no harm and she really did want to help me. But how can Aqua help me when she can't even help herself with her own situation? We in similar situations and she can't even help herself. So how she gonna help me? Sometimes when people say something, listen to them, believe them. So let me repeat this last line again. Diamond said to me, I understand Aqua is coming from a good place. She do want to help me. But how can she help me when me and Aqua going through similar situations? And that's why I'm going to leave part two for you guys. Because part three, yeah, it's going to tell you guys all about Lucky and Aqua. So, you guys, if you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. Share it with your dog, your neighbors, the stray cats, and everybody in the neighborhood. Until next time, you guys. Peace. Be looking forward to part mother three, two. Yeah, all that, all that. All right, I'm gone for it this time, y'all. Bye.